Happy Yay! Sunday, everyone! <laughs> we made it! Oh, this is great. Welcome back to the Forest Effects Arena, where the world's most extraordinary uh, Autodesk flame artists take on the world's most ordinary tasks, live, head-to-head, -head, from deep inside the Render Dome. I'm your host, Andy Milkis, and alongside me are my co-host, Randy McAtee. Oh, Howdy. Howdy. Right. And Amanda Elliott. Hey! How's it going, Randy and Amanda? It's doing great. Great to be here deep inside Fantastic. the Render Dome. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, it's always a pleasure to see both of you, and uh, we're both putting on these fake smiles. Like, we didn't actually just go through two rehearsals, so I want to appreciate <laughs> I want to applaud. Not I want to applaud both of you, but I absolutely want to applaud the man behind the curtain, the wizard of vMix, the stream master general for this adventure of ours, the lovely and talented <laughs> oh, Brian what, Fox. What, what? Look at him. What, what? Hey, thanks Let's... for not thanks for not screwing it up this time. <laughs> are, we, yeah, right? are we live? I think we're live. Yeah, we're live. Are we I live? think so. What's this thing on? Know. The chat bot. Let's ask I the chat it. bot if we're alive. All right, that's the it. The chat I, bot is right. the chat bot is lit. I gotta go not screw up. <laughs> so you guys can do it if you want. I'll I'll be over here panicking. <laughs> thanks, Brian. All right. <laughs> this is Perfect. great. Thanks, Brian. All right, we have a fantastic show lined up for you folks today. Amanda, why don't you tell us about today's matchup? I don't know, man. I'm just excited to be here. No, I'm just kidding. So today's challenger in the red corner from Toronto, Ontario, Canada is Sean Conkren. Don't you know? Hey. Oh, vanity. His home and native land. <laughs> Sean has two polar bears and a pet moose named Twinkle Toes. I don't know if you guys knew that. His favorite t-shirt color is flannel. His favorite time of day is poutine o'clock. I just made that up. I don't know. It's probably a real time. I'm not sure. Um, also, Sean likes his coffee black with the side of, I can't believe the Toronto Maple Leafs haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1967. Uh, I mean, he likes his coffee with sugar. That's what I meant. Oh. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Sean. <laughs> oh, yeah. And How are you feeling was, today? I think that hit too sure. close to home. I feel fantastic. I feel great. <laughs> I left my Canadian tuxedo at home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I felt I'd just wear what I usually wear in a session to try and uh, stay loose. You got your toque on, I see. That I works. Have the toque. Yeah, I tried to, you know, to be putting some more Canadian tropes in here, but I thought maybe two more cups <laughs> and Molson wasn't uh, a good look for me, so. Yeah, maybe next hey, time well, I'll be a sponsor. Doing pretty good for... yes. <laughs> yeah, right next time. Right, it's a branding <laughs> so, opportunity. Right. Good job, Randy. Let me tell you. Good, good. Well, we appreciate that as well. So, and over in the blue corner, sorry if you're colorblind, uh, taking on Sean is re the return, uh, returning Northeast regional champion, <laughs> Andy I love Dill. It. Hey, thanks, Andy. I've, I've been I panicking. Like, what is happening? I was like, what's, what's in this camera? He cut his hair. He's a new man. Like, like, okay. Oh, where, where am I? Okay, so Lake Cochran Dill's about six foot two in heels on a good day. He's a flame artist from Vermont, so he has a beard made of magical powers. In 80s off time, he's working on a new poetry book simply titled Mom Jeans. So thank you, Mr. Dill, for joining us. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Good. Well, we have a real clash of the titans here and what could amount to the biggest confrontation between the U.S. and Canada since the movie Canadian Bacon. A moment of silence for the big man. Randy, why don't you tell us how the Render Dome competition works? All right, guys, think of Render Dome as Iron Chef, but for flame artists, our warriors have each already downloaded an encrypted zip file containing today's secret ingredients. In that file is a simple task that many of us have been asked to do before, but never live, never head to head, and never, never. with a live, hostile internet audience. The password will be, will be given to them shortly, and uh, they're off and running and have 45 minutes to best perform that task. And remember, an event like this is minutes. nothing without, yeah, 45 minutes this time, upgrade. And uh, yeah, they'll, uh, so please keep the chat up with some PG level trash talking and uh, heckle away. Amanda. But in addition to the trash talking, Randy, this is an excellent opportunity for the community to ask questions. We have two amazingly talented, legendary flame artists here today, as well as myself, Randy and Andy Milkus. Well, Andy Milkus, iffy. Uh, so people of the world watching us today, if you have questions for either of our contestants about what they're doing, uh, you can ask them in the chat and maybe, you know, if we feel like it. Uh, unless Randy's too busy eating popcorn, like he always does, uh, we'll pass him along. Thank you, Amanda. And uh, everybody at home, if you haven't already, please take a moment to like and subscribe. We would absolutely appreciate that. Um, throughout the show, we're going to be announcing some random winners of today's prizes. Uh, they are 12-month subscriptions to Mocha Pro, 
Sapphire, and Optics, courtesy of our friends at Boris FX. If you'd well, like what? a chance to win, you need to head on over to logic.tv slash prizes and enter your name and email address. I'm monitoring that list. I see a bunch of people have gone ahead and entered that. But uh, Brian, could you throw that up on the screen for us? What do you want? <laughs> so <prepared. Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, say There's it again. Showprizes.jpg. Oh, yeah. And in case um, for everyone slacking it or for Brian slacking at home, every few minutes, the, uh, our, 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 uh, our chat bot is going to uh, spam the chat with, with subsequent links. So uh, keep an eye on the chat bot and uh, be kind. He'll deliver all the information Brian forgets to give us. Yeah, yeah apologize for that. Don't, do I not have a, I don't no know worries. if I have a, um, a show. I will, uh, I will put it in the chat again or the chat bot, our eager friend, the chat bot will, uh, will, uh, will make sure it's there. Why right. don't we... Get underway. So contestants, are you ready to face the render dome? They better be. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Good answer. Can't wait. Randy, what is He's doing the Mr. Password? Miyagi warm up? <laughs> no, no Mr. Miyagi necessary. <laughs> Gentlemen, your password will be given to you this week to show mercy upon your souls. The password of today's file is bagel. Bagel is the password. Yep. In the honor password of password is bagel. So the uh, Andy and Sean are now eagerly typing the word bagel into uh, their respective flames, and they're going to bring up the secret ingredient, the clip, their task for today. It looks like... Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, there we go. It looks like you've been given a driving clip. Look at that. And a red pen frame. Yep, Brian's brought up the clip here. This is the secret ingredient for today. This is the task at hand. We'll let that loop a couple of times. And uh, oh, it and looks my, like uh, we also... my my oh yeah, my email just ahead, pinged. Man. I got a note from the producer, Andy. Do you want me to read it to us? Oh, those are always good to, to get at two o'clock on a Sunday. <laughs> That's right. Can't possibly That's right. be bad news. That's right. Um, All right, guys. Here's here's today's producer. brief. This will be in my. Oh, this will be in my. Uh, at my... agencyoftheyear.com. Yeah, right. Yeah, this, <laughs> Ad emergency. This will, this will, this will be my casual producer voice. Um, hey, guys, thanks for jumping on this so quickly. We're really in a pinch as the spot needs to go to testing before the car show next weekend. Shocker. They have a meeting in about an hour, so we need a whip in 45 minutes so editorial can drop it in the cut and post. Uh, hey, at least they shot the right color car this time. Am I right? Uh, right. The client's legal flagged this shot as they feel it's driving on the wrong side of the street. So we need to flop the shot because the car looks like it's driving on the left side and it's for North America. It's got to be on the right. So go ahead and start the shot by start your comp by flopping the shot. Uh, we'll need to fix the car badges because, you know, we're trying to sign a, sell a Lamborghini, not a Guinea Lambo. Uh, we're going to paint out the at and <laughs> T sign on the top. we got to make the stoplights green because, you know, it kind of looks like the car could be running a red light. And we'll need to change all those hanging flags circled to be something ND or nondescript because clients are out of budget for stock. So uh, the ECD has also said something about the shot being crooked or crooked. And some cars are facing the wrong direction, but she's on a shoot in the hills with no service. And we got cut off, so I'm not sure what she meant. She'll clarify at lunch in about 20 minutes. So go ahead and get cooking and we'll regroup on this later. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> nicely worded email. That was great. Very nicely worded. And uh, I think we're yeah. straight, from, straight from the archives. Ambo, right? from now on. And I like that you guys That's share right. an email address too. That's cute. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yep. This is a good red pen frame here. Right. Yep. So we have uh, the banners need to be modified for legal. Well, the shot has to be flopped. Right. They're not mm -hmm. all the badges. The license plate have to be turned out straight. We got to replace lights. those banners, make the red lights green, and uh, get rid of the AT&T logo. All right. Um, you know, it's uh, it's the old, like, I need a whip in 45 minutes for a meeting email. If I had a nickel for every one of those, right, Kai? If we all did. All right, so let's see here. Andy Dill. I'm sorry, Sean. Let's start with Sean. What are you thinking sure. when you look at this and you get that note from the client? Oh, I see you've already started tracking something. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask, how are you going to approach this task? We actually haven't started the clock yet. So, the clock has uh, not started. There is, there's no work to be done That's yet. okay. Let him, let him work. Let him work. Oh, just, just start. Just start the <laughs> clock. What, it's okay. Just say sorry. But how, are you gonna, how would you approach a task like this? Oh my Other gosh, than immediately and with gusto. I feel, 
I feel awful. Now, did Andy Dill start already too, or no? Did he wait like a no, it's, man? It's, no, no, no. He's been raising his. <laughs> 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 he's been busy playing with his camera. Uh, I feel, I feel awful. But so to answer your question, Andy, no, as he, as um, it keeps working. <laughs> 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 No, no, keep working, bro. Keep working. This is legit. I, I I'm all. I, I love that you. I love that you started. That is such a Sean Cochran thing to do. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> we just so, stop his clock um, ten seconds before. Dude, have, we haven't started the clock, so I'm not going to go to my no. screen, even though you keep telling me, Randy, to go back to the screen. Getting mixed signals here. <laughs> well, you can scrub. Um, Why don't yeah, you scrub no, through so, the clip and then talk about what your what your approach is to the show? Sure, hundred percent. Let's do that. So, I mean, for me, you know, I would just start. Uh, planar tracking this right away. I, I'm probably going to just start foreground to background. Um, and so the first thing that I was going to do was planar track this guy, stabilize it, use that exact same planar track to, um, to put it back on top of itself, but flipped. What I cool. don't want to do, I want to try anyway to, to keep all this rain and water splash and all that stuff and any interactive lighting that's happening. I want to keep all that stuff if I can. So that's why I'm, I'm not going to go to a still straight away. I'm going to try and work mm -hmm. the footage. Good. What's your looking at the shot? Just overall, what's your biggest concern? I I don't think I really have any concerns. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, oh, it, it, all, oh it all seems <laughs> it all seems pretty. I mean, pretty standard, really. You know. Famous last words. The only thing I'm going to say, though, is I, I feel like the shot has already been flipped, yeah? It's pre-flipped, even though the It looks like it has been, they, yes. The, our, our folks in the, uh, in the um, machine room tried to help you out with, uh, with that, or in, uh, in color. Andy Dill, what about you? What's your approach? So to clarify, the car is currently in the correct position. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It should be on the right. Yes. yes. OK. Um, I'm going to try, see if we can get a camera track off this to speed up stabilizing and, uh, replacing all the flags and the street lights. And then, um, yeah, I was planning on doing something similar to Sean in terms of the car plate, just seeing if I can get a nice track on that. So I can just flip it and, um, yeah, go from there. I think. Ready to rock and roll. Hopefully it tracks well. That's what yeah, isn't, right. that, isn't that always the case? All right, yeah. thanks guys. It sounds like we got a uh, we've got a, a contest here, a real contest. Amanda, you want to kick this off? Yeah. All right, flame artists, you've seen the secret ingredient: sharpener knives or stylus. You have 45 minutes to make the best or the worst comp of your entire life, <laughs> but no pressure. But all of your peers are watching, and we are a very judgmental group. So, are you guys ready? Yes. On your marks. Absolutely. Are you listening, Sean? Are you listening, Sean? <laughs> on your marks! Get, it's brutal. Get, get set! Flame on! All right, Renderdome 2 is underway. The clock has started. Wah, wah, wah. And, uh, That's my sound effect. We're on you guys in the chat there to, you know, to uh, ask questions. Oh yeah, Brian's on the clock. <laughs> and everything in between. Go. Brian, we're, rack us up some music, Brian. We need some. We need some. Music. We need some compositing music. Don't oh, we slacking some, already, uh, some, man. Yeah, it's, 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 it's music. That's the... You don't like my music choice? We got music on there right now. I don't hear any music. Oh, oh maybe you, it's but... going out to. Yeah. Uh, it's going out to the world. Yeah, you yeah, guys probably. probably don't. Oh, yeah, you're right. Cause it's on a. It's on a bus. I'm fancy. Oh, I'm no fancy worries. like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 and we're we're obviously we're, we're, we don't really we don't we're more subway maybe, people. Maybe That's actually, I'm totally about. not confident in that. So people, let me know if you hear music out there. You should be hearing in music. In the chat, are you guys hearing any music? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, in Kyle, the chat. The music level. <laughs> That's our weekly question, right? This is this is where we see oh, how if Brian's underway. legit or not. Jeff, <laughs> I can see Sean's got. Uh... Jeff Kyle hears music. Ah, Jeff, Jeff Kyle's what? Music. All right. Oh, Thanks, you Brian. Brian. Look at what's going on here. All right, what's all right. Jeff, Jeff Kyle, see. Jeff Kyle, the checks in the mail. Well, Andy, um, um, you've Andy, you've been in this hot seat before. So, what do you think is uh, is going through Mr. Cochran and Mr. Dill's brain about this moment in time? Well, you know, it's uh, this was it was doing the render dome was stressful, but it was kind of it was also a little bit familiar because as flame artists, especially those of us who've worked in like client supervised sessions. This is, you know, this is every day. You're handed something, you have no idea how you're gonna do it. You just know that you need to do it. 
And you, you know, the best thing to do sometimes is just get started. Like as both mm. Sean and Andy said, no matter how they approach tracking or stabilizing, the shot has to be tracked or stabilized. So you might as well get started with that. If you get a good mm. track, then that's you know one thing off the list, and you can start rotoing and tracking and restoring and cursing you know the choices you made in your life and the decisions that led you to this point, like we all do as seasoned flame artists. But uh, what I thought was interesting, could you, uh, Brian, could you go back to the the, uh, the split screen there? Yeah, so it looked like um, Andy Dill started his 3D track, and then I don't know if he was adding a manual tracker or if he just said, to hell with the 3D track, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and do this point by point. No, I've, uh, <clears throat> I'm still in the 3D track, but I'm putting tracking points on each of the flags and each of the streetlights. So when I pop back out, I will have an axis where I want it, rather than just Perfect. randomly scattered throughout the scene. Nice. Perfect. Well, Andy, I got a question for you. So you knew you were saying you were tracking a shot first, but is there like a group of things that you do? Uh, like for example, like I'm gonna tackle this shot this way where I've got a group of things that I do, or and then I'm gonna tackle it this way. Or do you maybe start with stuff that you're familiar with first and then you try something that you're not so familiar with or do you dive in the deep end and like, hey, I haven't used this node or this group before. Let's try this one first. Like how do you approach something like that? Exactly. I think if I can get a track off something, that's always the first thing. And if I can get a camera track off something, that's always the first thing because it just makes everything else tracked. So if I can get a nice camera track here, then I can just start putting little things in space and then worrying about color and everything else. And that'll take most of the tracking duties of the shot away. So yes. tracking's you first. That's good. And you know, this is actually a good yeah. question uh, for Andy Milkis, too. Like, how did you approach before, like, not knowing anything or maybe just shots in general, Mr. Milkis, about, like, do you have a set group of skills or things that you tackle first? Or do you like to be like, ah, you know, maybe I'll try something new. Maybe I've never done before. I haven't tried much before. I mean, I'm always looking for, like, an opportunity to try some new technique or something that I haven't tried before or, or you know, something I don't have enough practice with. Um, Oftentimes when you're put in a situation like this where you've got 45 minutes to do what might be the impossible, you got to go with what you know, you know, but um, mm. you know, I, I, someone once said, and, and that someone may have been me, I, I really don't remember at this point, I've been doing this too long, but uh, <laughs> that like every good artist knows how to stretch their own canvas and mix their own paint. And all of these, you know, all of the things that you're seeing both of the uh, artists do right now are just core compositing tasks, you know? Um, and I know for me, when I, I'm faced with this, like, oh my God, how am I going to handle this? I just try to chip away at all the things on the list. Like, as Andy Dill said, you got to track this thing, no matter where you start. If you start in the foreground, mid ground, background, if you're into a 3D track or individual, you got to track something, you know? Um, or even when, when, uh, I was, when I was in my render dome, when I was trying to figure out how I was going to handle the different tasks, I started rotowing the chairs in the foreground because you know what? It's got to be roto, you know? So it's got to be I'm done. Making, I'll yeah. do the roto, and then we'll figure it out from there. You know, that's kind of how I approach it. Good, good to know. Let's see. So I'm looking over at the chat here, and uh, Quinn is very right. Every day is render down for a flame artist. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and you know, Quinn, I also have to say, you know, uh, I got to give Andy Dill some credit here. He's saying if you can get a camera track, that's gambling man. One of the things that's definitely true in these situations is, you know, everything you try comes to the expense of time. So you have to know, that's one of the things you learn as an experienced artist is when to stop and move on. Is when this isn't gonna work and maybe you just have to brute force it or whatever, so. Oh, that's a good one. That actually kind of goes into my next question. What do you do when you're using the same tools that you know and they've worked before and before and all of a sudden you get stuck? You're like, oh my gosh, everything that I know, I poured into the shot and it's just not working. What do you do at that point? <laughs> You, uh, I mean, like, it's, it, you can always change your phone number. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, if you can't go to the bathroom, you, then you put up, you put yeah, up exactly. or you put up the center line and just do it by hand. Do every five frames. Do whatever you know. Like, yeah. there's there's always some way to move the like move the flag forward down the field, move the ball forward down the field. Mm, well said. I just I, I always love uh, <laughs> Glenn Bennett. I don't know if you guys says, know that flame artist. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, one of the things, uh, my friend Glenn Bennett, I don't know if you guys know him, he's another flame artist, one of the things he says, just paint it. 
Every time, you know, I have a question about somebody, just paint it. I was like, ah! What? <laughs> okay, just paint it. That is a really good way to lose a lot of time. I end up just painting things. And I'm <laughs> yeah. But if you've been painting, like, throughout college, it's, right like, it's a different story. <laughs> For me, yeah, it's <laughs> pulling any kind of a track will get you somewhat closer to the solution. So it's like, even if you have a bad track, if you could take some motion out, then maybe you can track your poorly stabilized thing and you can start to sort of move it towards manageable. So a lot of tracking for me. Uh, Todd super in the chat has uh, won the early award for uh, most gut-wrenching comment that the client could make. <laughs> and that was like, the client just called and said, how hard would it be to get the, get rid of the rain? <laughs> you know, thinking the shop might look better if it was not raining out, if it was dry out. <laughs> oh, God. Medium like blur for before, the win. I'll say it again. we got to do a podcast of like war stories. You could do it. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't do it in 45 minutes, but most of it's just replacing the reflection on the ground. Like even the stuff behind the Lambo is not too bad. You could probably yeah. grade it down mm -hmm. enough where it just looks like atmosphere. But if you got rid of the reflection on the ground, tracked a new road texture in there with no reflection, probably look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, something put your we phone haven't in talked about mode. yet. <laughs> That's that's something we haven't talked about yet or looked at. There, uh, you know, the uh, the good old '80s wet down of our streets uh, can sometimes make the shot look nice. But man, dealing with reflections <laughs> of stuff on the ground can be quite a task. Totally. Uh, yeah. So everybody in the chat, if you oh, haven't already done, already done so, please enter your name and email address for a chance to win. One of our prizes today, just head on over to logic.tv slash prizes, uh, enter your name and email address, and in a little bit, we're going to start giving away some prizes. Make sure you get your name on the list. Woo and Greg Paul Malone's in the house. Oh, my God. Now we have a party. <laughs> Greg Paul says, we're kind of Sean's thinking a more pastoral setting now, if you can just give that a quick shot. Yes, let's, <laughs> let's replace the street. <laughs> With, with I really love how focused Sean, Sean is right is, now. Uh, He's probably Sean's listening to Skrillex. The, uh, the grid. <laughs> listening to Skrillex. He's listening to Skrillex Sean right now. Sean perspective grid. Here we go. So we're taking a look at Sean here. He's clicking away furiously. This is a time to yeah, we need a uh, we, we need we need a, we need an insert shot of uh, of everyone's hands and fingers working. Yeah, right. Time lapse. Oh, the uh, oh, the there. chatbot is the, the chatbot's throwing shade and says, uh, "Ain't nobody like Canadian bagels <laughs> in the chat." Yeah, that's what? that was a sore subject actually in uh, at Lively <laughs> last week. Someone brought it up and us. Oh no, I think it was actually it was between New York and L.A. bagels. You know. Let's take a minute while we'll, we'll let these guys work and we're going to take a minute to thank our sponsors here at, uh, at Logic Live. And we're also going to test Brian's ability to bring up um, pre-made graphics. Oh my God. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we're judging you. Nah, we're not judging. We've already judged. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, the ship has sailed, Brian. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Boris Effects and the Boris, Boris Effects Suite. These guys make the best plugins in the business. You all know that. We all love them, uh, whether it's Mocha, Silhouette, Sapphire, Continuum, or Optics. Uh, these guys are the best. And uh, we are offering up a Logic TV discount code for any of the Boris Effects products. If you uh, type in Logic-15 Logic at checkout, you can save 15% on any Boris Effects product, standalone or subscription. And thank you very much to our friends at Boris Effects. We also want to thank our friends at Cynesis.io. Cynesis has been a supporter of the Flame community forever. I mean, for as long as, as, we, as we've been Flame artists, they sponsor user groups uh, all over North America, the One Frame of White contest, the, the parties. Uh, I, I remember specifically uh, calling up um, Steve Strong and saying, hey, for our party in, uh, in Vegas, um, any idea how I can get a, an ice sculpture that says like One Frame of White on it? <laughs> you know, and he made it happen because he's Steve Strong. Um, these guys have been my personal reseller for 15 years. We could not do what we do without them, and we certainly could not have survived uh, this whole shift to, you know, working remotely in the pandemic without 
the infrastructure and support that we get from them. So thank you very much, Synesis, for sponsoring Logic Live, solutions development, integration, and support, supporting Flame Artists since 1997. And we also want to give a shout out to the guys at Gunpowder. We had them on Logic Live a couple weeks ago, uh, showing off their, uh, their remote solutions and their cloud solutions. It was absolutely amazing. So if you have any needs at all for, uh, for support or for some, some cloud uh, infrastructure, Give Tom and Tom at Gunpowder uh, a shout at info at gunpowder.tech. And we want to thank, oh, actually, this is, this is, this is an outdated slide. We have far more Patreon patrons uh, than this. <laughs> there so we're just going to, we're going to give is. them a blanket thank you a little bit later. Okay. So if we could switch over to. <laughs> oh, and don't more. forget, uh, and don't forget after the, uh, oh. after the event, we've got a patrons only after party. You sign up for Patreon uh, yeah, during do. the show. We'll send you a link, and I'm hijacking this. Sorry, Andy, but we got to love our patrons. That's all right. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna do a little uh, little little Q and A session afterwards. We're gonna be hanging out in the green room. So uh, anyone that signs up now, we'll make sure we get you a link before the end of the show. Sign up now. That's right. And uh, let's just also take a second to give a shout out to the forum. Uh, the forum has been uh, breaking records the last couple of weeks, Randy. Isn't that right? Yeah, we're uh, we are very excited. It's um, we're averaging over 100,000 views uh, on a 30 day average, which means um, wow. our, our hosting bill just went up, <laughs> which we're yes. like insanely <laughs> excited about. So we're going to pay more money to uh, to the man. But we're super thrilled because uh, everyone's on there and using it. We've got over 800 users. Uh, we've got uh, about 150 flame artists sign up every or log in every day to the site. Um, so do, it's just so exciting. Like, I think the, the, we're really coming into our own and finding an audience. So thanks to you guys for showing up and, uh, and Karen. And finally, we want to welcome back to Logic Live an old friend, uh, our friends at AJA. Uh, they make the best video hardware in the business. You know them, you love them. So we want to thank them for sponsoring uh, not just Logic Live, but uh, also the One Frame of White contest, the live Logic parties we've had at NAB. Uh, and a, uh, AJA and Flame have been together since 2006. Thank you very much, guys. And let's go back to the render dome. I feel like you've done that before, Andy Milkis. Really good at that part. Wait, and, and before we get too far, Andy, I just want to make sure, Andy, <laughs> did you did you promise to do an in-person live NAB event with an ice sculpture as soon as we get done to quarantine? Did I hear that correctly, Andy? Oh, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I've done it. It would be my third. It was great. The last one had like changing lights. It was incredible. But let's see where we are. We're, we're, uh, uh, Andy Dill on the right has moved on to uh, that phase of the process where you add magenta frames to everything, right? <laughs> I always think we call that a... often occur outside of this work. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, you to check your to check your tracks. Perfect. Yeah. Fun. Neat. Yeah, Say that five times fast. Check your tracks. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Um, thanks, everybody. The, the list of uh, people who have signed up for prizes is uh, has grown. This is wonderful. Looking forward to that. OK. We always look forward to giving away somebody else's stuff. <laughs> oh, of course. Especially Brian's stuff. We're using it. It's fine, too. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I wish it was my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Andy Dell has moved on to, oh no, is that Sean? That's Sean. We're doing some roto. Oh, roto magic. Sean's beautiful fierce thing. today. Look at him go. Yeah, we're about a third of the way through. We're, uh, we're 30 minutes or 15 minutes into our 45. So uh, looks like the guys are making good progress, but they're getting into some details here. Man. Sean, what was the color management node for before you uh, before your roto? Oh, uh, I'm working in linear, just a oh, okay. simple linear workflow, and uh, I don't like tracking in uh, linear. Why not? So I just simply. Why is I that? Don't think it tracks you should take up some time in the chat. <laughs> I don't think, it, I don't think ah, it tracks ah. well at all. Yes, that's been, a, that's been a subject. Oh, yeah. Not controversial. So, I mean, I love the linear workflow. Everything looks awesome. 
and everything, you know, all the math works great, but not the tracking and not the color work, in my opinion. Nice. I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to hear if somebody else has the same issue. I think we all complain sometimes about the tracker just going like, you know, crazy when we don't think it should. And maybe that's uh, maybe that's a linear thing. Maybe there's just too much stuff for it to hang on to. Yeah. It does seem to occur yeah. more in linear. Yeah. And Sean, you mentioned it looks better in linear. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, I think all of the compositing looks better. You know, I mean, I know that the selling feature of linear is the, is, uh, you know, all the defocusing and the blurs, uh, but I just think everything looks a little bit better. Um, just the way that, you know, A over B even, just simple compositing stuff. Mm -hmm. For me, it always looks better. So I, I love the linear workflow for all that stuff. What do you think, Andy? Should we give away some prizes? Yes, I'm spinning the wheel yes. here. <clears throat> I can almost hear the sweat rolling down Brian's forehead right now. <laughs> Let's give it a second. <laughs> cue, cue, cue the prizes. <laughs> we lost him. Gone. We lost Brian. That's yeah, it right. shows an autopilot. Yeah, it's cool. Sorry. Right. Can we check sorry. with the chat? Come back I, when he feels like it. Should I be back? Should I, am I back? <laughs> yeah, give, <laughs> give, me, give me a couple minutes. Taking a nap? <laughs> no problem. All right, give me, uh, Quinn give me a shout the, out to uh, some Quinn's, friendly faces here. Yeah, Quinn's oh, in the ahead, house. Sorry, Brooks man. is in the house. Yeah, yeah Brooks says it, drive, it drives Brooks in. crazy too with the trackers. So yeah, Brooks is... Uh, Brooks is sharing in the, uh, in, in the, in the rec tracking department, uh, team. When it goes crazy, it does that like Superman thing where it goes off screen. And yeah, anyway. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> it just yeah. veers, like suddenly <laughs> veers to the left. Uh... Oh, sorry, if you're in, if you're in rec 709, it doesn't. So yeah. I just grab a color management in mode and I quickly, uh, do what, and then it fixes it right away. Nice. Well, I think we are ready to give away a license of optics from Boris Effects. Do this it. is like having all of Sapphire uh, available to you in Photoshop. It's really an amazing tool. So, uh, Amanda, do you want to pick a name out of the hat there? Oh, boy. Yes. Yes, I do. Drum roll. <laughs> I forgot. Does is she have a hat? <laughs> do you have a hat? <laughs> I forgot. I'm Where's just like mine right now. I forgot this part. <laughs> Where's the hat? Oh, man. Okay. Um, no, I, there's no hat. Where's the hat? Oh, is the hat in the chat? Yes. Got it. Okay. Hey, so prize. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> you hey, used to be to... professionals. <laughs> yeah, I from swear Effects I've done this going to. Is it pronounced Yola? It is. Okay, I just want to make sure I do that correct. <laughs> Why? And Yola's last name? I. Uh... We're, we're smashing this, guys. <laughs> Starts with a K. <laughs> yes, Kudela. Congratulations, Kudela. Yola. Yola Kudela. Sorry. <laughs> Yola Kudela, congratulations, congratulations. 12, 12 months. months, right? 12 months to optics. Pretty, pretty cool. Photoshop plugins. If you guys yes, don't sir. know, it's Sapphire inside Photoshop. Also, a ton of other stuff. The old DFT plugins, um, which anyone's ever familiar with, they used to be bundled with Tiffin. Um, so a bunch of cool, nice. you know, uh, black mist and a bunch of cool filters in there. 12 months to optics. Congratulations. That's how it's done. Oh That's God, how it's sorry. done. Nice. I thought it was a graphic. I was waiting for the graphic. <laughs> okay, got it. Clearly, we forgot to send Brian the graphics. <laughs> it happens. It's memo. live. Got it's it. live We're TV. Good. Let's check back yeah. in totally happens. with uh, Sean and Andy totally and see happens. what they're up to. Totally happens. De definitely and not the first time I've been sold out. <laughs> Today. Hey, exactly. In the past like, hey, 30 for, minutes. For everyone. Yeah. 
for everyone in the chat too, we just opened up uh, voting for the eventual Render Dome World Champion. So um, if you want to vote for Sean, you can vote for Sean by typing in an exclamation mark Sean. And if you want to vote for Andy, you can type in an exclamation mark Andy. And I'll show you an example here in a second. Uh, and who knows, maybe maybe the chat bot will be able to keep track of it. We'll see. If not, we'll just count them up. But that's how you can vote. So um, I'll remind you guys in a minute how that works. All right. looks like uh, I'm checking on Andy Dill here. It looks like he's got a, a generic kind of, uh, what are we calling those things? A little flag? Yeah, I'm just on. painting Very nondescript I texture. Ideas, but, um, I don't know that I have enough time to get silly on this one. So I'm just going to replace them. That's it, man. Edge blur for the win. Right? Like, you know, any client, they're just like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, nobody can argue with that. This is my plan. Well, hey guys, my uh, my email just pinged. I think we, I think the uh, the, the uh, creative director just came down from from the hills, and her email just went through. So uh, uh -oh. I, I finally understand what she was meaning about some of the cars facing the wrong direction. Um, yeah, Brian, can you bring up have... the uh, the second the second red pencil for us? Maybe. This is always the worst part, not of Render Dome. I mean, when you finally like get into the groove and you think you're going to finish on time, and then the client, you know, chimes in with just one more comment, like one more person in the chain has has, uh, has chimed in. Just one more little thing won't t won't take long. Just a little bit, right? And then like they send you a JPEG called Red Pen O2. Mm. Um, one one second, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> What could this client possibly have seen after looking at this for anything. how long? Exactly. Yeah, like a Quinn says, they want the car coming at us now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, so guys, so, so uh, Mr. Cochran and Mr. Dill, so uh, the legal department has seen, uh, seen the shot flipped, and now they're wondering why there's a row of parked cars immediately to the side of the Lamborghini that are potentially facing the wrong way. And... Most importantly, there's a car at the end of the road with its headlights on, which is making the Lamborghini look like it's on a collision course with death and illegal car making activities. So they're asking if there's anything you can do, they would be forever grateful and send you all of their remaining work for the rest of time. Oh, dun, dun, dun. And they're giving you more time to do it, right, Randy? Nah, I didn't see anything about that. Any more time? Any more money? <laughs> no? Echo? No more time. <laughs> microphone work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at, look at what Quinn said, delivered by Carrier Pigeon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. exactly. All right, so this our is client has thrown us a curveball. They added something else. And uh, let's see what our friends do with that. Looking at Sean over here on the left. Wait. Uh, he's attacking those banners now. Still working on the flag. Bless you. Yeah. Nice. And I wish I had done what Andy Dill had done and just removed the artwork instead of the actual flag. Mm. Mm, so I remember the first time I had to replace the these. For the first time I ever had to replace these, I cursed whatever idiot put that gap in between, like the flag and the pole. Oh yeah. You know, like the oh, yeah. two pixels that let everyone know that that there's actually parallax in the known universe. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so Somewhere there is a public's work department that's been putting a lot of milk in a lot of flame artist fridge over the years, you know? What I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody in the chat just said the client note is called screenshot 2021-0328 at 21631. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely true. That's their high res. Yep. Totally. Oh, my God. It's perfect. Even Jeff in the chat is saying, like, this is getting a little too close to home, you know? But I don't know. I, I look at this shot here. I guess this is this looks like it's it, it's a shot from L.A. And clearly, this art director, whoever's giving the comment, has not ever has never driven like up Riverside Drive, or you know whatever it is, Eleventh Avenue in Manhattan, where no for no apparent reason whatsoever, there's opposing red lights. You know. Yeah. That's what I would. I just would. I think it probably would have been easier to make it look like New York than to just you know than to get rid of the background there. 
Yeah, car ads are tough. I mean, road cleanup, uh, making white, white uh, road markings into yellow or yellow road markings into white, like... Well, what about this just... shot? What about if you had to do a sky replacement on this one? What do you guys think about that? Would be uh, Andy Milkus, what would be one way that you would try and tackle that? Well, um, you know, looking at the first thing I do is I look at the source material and the source material we got from the client on this was a ProRes LT clip, um, naturally, because uh, no one could find the source <laughs> material at the last minute. So like, I looked at the over at the, the sky there and it's just like, it's white, it's clipped. I mean, maybe if we had the original mm -hmm. source material, we could grade it down or we could expose down and, and get some detail from like what was really there in the sky. Um, so what I would probably try to do is either A, talk them out of it, or B, uh, let them know there's not enough time to get that done. Uh, for the, do you really need this for the meeting? Like that kind of question. Um, okay. But probably just do I, a I, slight little gradient from the top or something like that. You know, just actually, a very slight little bit of blue. Actually, Andy, that's that's a fabulous point. Like, you know, it's one thing we've never talked about. Obviously, we're throwing the world at these two guys. Um, but what do you do when something isn't realistic to achieve by their goal and you you can't say no problem like how do you how mm -hmm. do you handle that situation i've been always like very adamant about you know telling my client or or having the producer uh say to the client like you can't ever say no you know so we're not saying no we're saying yes but like and and just just set expectations that are realistic you know like you want to replace the sky. Well, is that some, ask the questions. Don't just say yes. If you just say yes, sometimes mm. that's as bad as saying no, because you can end up failing. I mean, you know, if, if you didn't take the time, if your producer, for example, just on the phone said, yeah, no problem, without mm -hmm. giving the artist a chance to look and see if the source material allowed for anything that wouldn't look fake, you know, uh, then right. you end up looking bad, really. So I, right. I think really well, what if... it's, it's, it's all about like setting a relationship with your client that's that's based on you know setting realistic expectations making them feel like you're a, a partner in in solving their creative problems or, or a creative partner in solving their problems you know um and then set expectations right so that's my mm. that's a good one too it's a good thing to point out too oh sorry amanda i jumped the gun there oh i was just i was gonna say you just brought up a really good point i was gonna ask randy the same thing <laughs> oh uh i mean that's a tough one to be in right because like we're uh uh, you know, as as you stare into the void of of doing creative work where you have you've never done this particular task, like Sean and Andy have never done this particular thing before. They've done similar things, right? But it's just a different recipe. So that's a tough one. Usually, it's like you know, I'd probably lean on what kind of what Andy Milk has said and and say like, hey, no problem. Um, I'm gonna need a week, and that week is gonna involve you know these three things because we gotta do these things. So. You know, that's, but that's a tough one to swallow. I think that's, that's kind of what most artists pride themselves on being able to deliver is no problem. I mean, we've seen like, we've seen the guys here today, you know, show examples of where they did amazing things, you know? So that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough line to walk, you know? And yeah, it's totally is though too. Yeah. <laughs> well, my question, my question actually for both of you guys, cause you guys are definitely more senior than me, you've been in the game a little bit longer. So what do you do? Because now that we're remote, it's not like we're working in a bigger building where we have like 10 other artists where we can walk to, we have questions that we can ask them. Mm. So in the situation now where we're all remote, um, you know, and, and maybe asking senior or maybe even junior artists as well, what do you do when you're in a situation where so far you're doing good, you're doing comps, and then they ask this one thing that you might not know how to do and used to be able to just walk to the room next door and ask that person, that mm. artist, hey, help me out. Now that we're remote, do you guys see yourself having those kind of same challenges in uh, shots that you guys work on? Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. I think like five or six months into it, I was so desperate. It's one of the reasons we created the forums, you know, because like it was just, <laughs> yeah. you know, like legitimately, uh, you know, when I when I quit my staff job, we needed help and I needed to be able to call upon a community and and um and so hopefully that happens so the community bails me out like it happens once a week or so and um you know you phone a friend ask a friend and get some advice and post on the forums and yeah andy what about you uh, i completely agree you know uh and I, you know I, I made the mistake early on in my career of just being so eager to please that you end up with egg on your face because you say like yeah 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 i can do that but you really 
can't, you know. So even now, if something comes up and I'm not sure how to do it, or if it's one of those things where like, like Randy, you said, these, these two contestants today, they may not have worked on this shot, but they've seen mm. things like it in the past. Like never underestimate the, the test, you know. I'm often saying back to my producer or to the client, that sounds doable, let me just do a quick test. And that test they'll do, mm. and if they pressure you, like, well, we need an answer, we need an yeah, answer. Yeah, you're not okay, saying well, no. Well, the answer is it's gonna yeah. be like, it's gonna take anywhere from 30 minutes to 12 hours. I, I don't, you know, or you could let me test it and then I'll let you know, you know? So, right. can you give right. me a ballpark? That's a good yeah, one, test, know? I like that. That's a good one. Well, yeah, yeah, no one, I mean, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Um, <laughs> Before we get too far in, we, we, we're, we're, believe it or not, guys, uh, a lot of time has passed. We only have 13 minutes left. But, uh, and I just saw um, Cochran's eyebrows shoot up into the, into the toque when I said 13 minutes. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> before we got too far ahead of ourselves here, I wanted to minutes. give away another prize. It's time to give away a 12 month license of Sapphire. Um, Ooh. Also from, uh, from Boris Effects. So, uh, Amanda, you want to re uh, pick some a name out of the out of the <laughs> the proverbial hat? <laughs> yes. Uh, so the sapphire. Let's see. That's going to go to Andrew Exworth. Right, oh, Exworth. Congratulations. congratulations, congratulations, Andrew! Congratulations. congratulations, Andrew! Yes, that is a twelve-month license of sapphire. Congratulations. Nice. Use them every day and have for twenty plus years. Amazing. Let's see here. Congratulations. Ooh. Randy, here's a good question for you. Uh, in What's the that? chat, can you bill for the test? I threw out the idea of a test, but can you bill for a test? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, it, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, typically, flame artists might not. But then again, what makes a test different than a pitch? You know, like a, like a pit. And so sometimes people pay for pitches. Sometimes there's a budget for pitches. Um, I don't know. I would probably, you know, it's, that's a tough one. I think if it, if it takes a few hours and it helps you win it, is that, it helps you win a large job. I think it's worth it. Um, I've never sent an invoice for a, for a test. I have added time to a, an awarded invoice for said test, but I've never like, you know, here's my one test invoice, you know? Or what that's if that helps take the time answer, off your yeah. final comp time? Would you kind of well, roll actually, that well, into actually, that's invoice not, time? Well, I mean, possibly, but then again, it's kind of like you know when when I break my sink and the plumber comes over and does does his thing in like three seconds and charges me three hundred bucks, you know, and he says uh, he says that'll be three hundred bucks. I'm like, it took you thirty seconds, and he says, well, you you paid me for the years, and so you know, it, it's not unlike that. I just if I'm an expert, I learned it ten minutes ago. I still am an expert, so you know, if it helps me do a two, you know, charge for two days and do it in one, what's wrong with that? You know. Yeah, good point. I think also, like I, I, it's one of those things that you have to, uh, Randy, like you said, you have to build it in sometimes to mm -hmm. your, your estimate. And I mean, like, when I'm my, when I get asked to look at a shot and give an estimate for it, if I look at the shot and I know it's going to take me two hours to do, I say four. Or sometimes five, and not because I'm, I want to, you know, like, uh, you know, enjoy like enjoy a book or a nice movie or something while I'm working mm -hmm. on it, or take my time. It's just I know I'm never going to do this once. I'm going to do it two times or three times. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to do exactly what the brief asked for. I'm going to show it to the client, and they're going to want changes, and then their client's going to want changes. And if you don't ask for that extra time in your bid at onset. You may find that it's mm. difficult sometimes to get, the, you know, to, to, to charge for those uh, changes as an overage, uh, especially right. in this day. Oh, I see. So, I see. I see. So, have you, know, you guys so ever been some... in a situation where you have done the test shot and then you thought it was great and all of a sudden they were just like, nah, no, we're not going to go in that direction, no, or just like, no, thank you and bail? Like, have you ever had a situation where you thought everything was great, but then not so much? Like, how did they yeah. handle it? How did you handle it? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I mean, you get ghosted and I mean, I don't mean ghosted, like they never talked to you again, but you know, clients are in a, an impossible situation, right? They're the, the production and operational schedules and, and challenges they face are just unprecedented. Um, so they might be triple bidding you, you know, against two other, you know, competitors. Um, mm -hmm. so I think everyone just has a really hard job. And as long as everyone's trying hard and being kind, I kind of forget about it, but 
um, it doesn't always work out the way you do. Or you do the test, but you have so much, you have not enough time to ask the really right questions. You do a test and you solve the wrong problem. That's happened to me before. And so that's, um, you know, that, that's a tough spot to be in where that wasn't the problem. The problem is actually something else where you've provided a solution, but you know, the brand would never go for it or it's, it's, it's just not a solution that the client would, would actually pay for. So um, you got to ask we, enough um, questions if you're at, curious enough. Gotcha. I'm sorry to interrupt. We are at eight Good minutes left, guys. Eight oh, minutes. Sean, eight eight minutes, minutes left. Where did the time go? Real quick, Sean Cochran, how are you feeling? Uh, I think I'm feeling okay. I wanted to ask a question. Clarification. Yeah. <laughs> it was so we're removing the traffic on the um, right hand side, the parked cars, and also in behind, yeah, like a, where this bush is, mm -hmm. was the task. What about the cars on this side? Well, those are, those are all okay. So it's basically just okay. they just the client was just concerned about a vehicle traveling anti traffic or against traffic. Um, so uh so yeah it, it is a wish list yeah, item at this good. point so uh but so yeah that's Excellent. that's the current okay. status yep. unless you want the shot to die if you want the shot to die go ahead and take the time to do that extra work and that'll guarantee that the shot is, is dropped out of the cut before they present it to the client at the meeting so when's a good time when's a good time to bring that up to the client when do you bring that up to a client do you when it's in like a rush situation like this and you're like hey guys it doesn't make sense maybe the cars on this side do you do you tell the producer to bring it up or do like do you bring it up like how do you bring up something like that oh uh, that's a good gingerly. question <laughs> yeah you have to have a good relationship <laughs> with your producer because your producer um needs to you know uh, always needs to work like both sides of the problem you know like that that uh getting rid of that stuff on the other side of the street could be a revenue opportunity there could be an overage there you know but at the same time you're barely going to get done you know in in, in time oh, yeah so but they might be gone in the second shot to... or something like that yeah yeah if yeah, they want you know totally. maybe bring it up after you send this you know so bring it up in an email after you send this that way they still make their mm -hmm. cut off and then you look like the hero for calling out uh you know something that could be a potential a potential mm -hmm. gotcha um before, we only have six minutes left guys uh i wanted to ask mr dill how he's feeling uh i'm feeling okay um, not feeling great, but not feeling terrible. Uh, I thought I was doing a lot worse than I think I'm doing now. So if that <laughs> explanation progresses for six minutes, then I'll be doing great. But right now I'm kind of back legged and a little nervous. All right. Like a swan. But spoken like a true flame artist. Um, we're getting close to the time where we're going to give away our last prize, which is the uh, 12 month license of Mocha, or Mocha Pro rather. So I just want to make sure uh, if, if there's anybody out there in chat who hasn't already signed up at logic.tv slash prizes, please go ahead and do that and get your name on the list. All right. And uh, while we're here, I wanted to give a shameless plug for the Logic podcast. If uh, you guys haven't already, uh, please check out the podcast. We try to get them out as regularly as we can. Uh, you can uh, subscribe just by searching on Apple Podcast. Hey, Apple Podcast. There Stitcher, it is. Or Spotify. Uh, or your podcasting app of choice. Uh, so we've, we've, it's really been going great. We have 1,200 subscribers. So I want to thank them all for listening. And uh, of course, if you have any suggestions for podcast subjects or podcast episodes, please send them on in. Let's go back to the Render Dome with four, under four minutes, to, under five minutes to go, guys. Sorry. Okay. And uh, unlike your real job, you don't have to give any time for exporting, compressing, uploading the frame IO or whatever service you're using. So we can go right up to the end here. Okay. I'm not gonna get to those lights, oh my gosh. That's all right, because uh, Randy just got an email that said this shot's only gonna be delivered nine by 16. So <laughs> cars don't matter, oh, oh. lights don't matter. You can't see Oh, not now. true. <laughs> oh, that is so, oh. Heart attacks oh, all that's around. that's so savage. I just. Wow. I haven't had lunch yet, oh, but I man. think I just lost it. That hurt my soul. too real. Yeah. I feel like my render is going to be like nine minutes. So <laughs> I might be doomed already. That's all right. We can just, you could scrub we'll through it. We'll, we'll, call it we'll, we'll call it even. We'll call it even. We'll call it even. Oh, man. Almost 3.30 left. Is that what it is? Wow. Yeah, we're coming yeah. down to three minutes. Getting close. 
too close. All right. Just under just a little over three minutes. Uh, let's give away that license of Mocha Pro. This is a 12 month license of Mocha Pro. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out Mocha Pro and the amazing new mesh warper, please do. Uh, head on over to Boris, Boris, BorisFX.com and check it out. It's life changing. Uh, it's really, really an amazing advancement for uh, for the tool. So, um, Amanda, do you want to go ahead and give away our license? Yes, Mocha is going to Lurie Tempolsky. You're right. Oh, yes. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. That's great. Woohoo. Congratulations, Yuri. Congratulations, Yuri. And thank you very much, Brian and the team at Boris Effects for, uh, for sponsoring these podcasts. It's wonderful. All right. We're coming Super down great. to two and a half minutes left, guys. Finishing touches. Look at him go. Look at him sweat. Come on. You can hear I, the I mean, clicks. I you can when, hear the uh, fear in his clicks. <laughs> yeah, right? There's those magenta frames. So there they are. <clears throat> Back to save the day. We should get Logitech to be a sponsor so we can get new keyboards. Um, I remember this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Andy. Andy, we're losing you, Andy. Not going to hit. Did you lose me? Milkus. Did you lose Milkus. Milkus. Say that again, Milkus. Andy. We lost your voice oh, for a sec. Am I gone? No, you're, you're there. Am it's I just you got, a little, you got a little phony. Yeah, there you go. Towards the like, and it's out, you know. Oh my god, oh my god, what am I gonna what to make your choices? What am I not gonna get to? And you know, that yeah. those will be in the caveat client, and that's fine, you know. Say just for a lens flare, right? And it'll just blot out all the problem areas, you know. That's true. I mean, oh, this yeah. is a this is a, a pretty straightforward shot, yet there are. I don't know, maybe maybe almost maybe almost a, a, a dozen or two dozen individual things to touch. So it with you know three or four yeah, major it's a lot kind of, of things. Bits. It's a lot of little bits. Yeah. So but it's sneaky. I mean it's uh and you can brute force your way through each Shots one of those. Where, you, but... where once you cut up something, then you see something else. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like all of a sudden they want the, the wet ground, they want to dry or something. Oh. Very last minute. Oh. 45 seconds. That's Good luck with that. <laughs> That's brutal. That's another runner down. Here it comes. Yeah, Andy, it sounds like you're stuck in the canyon with the client. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get him, we'll get him back. Oh man, 20 seconds left. 20 seconds. Oh. What, oh, man. what? I mean, it's oh, over, go, gentlemen. Go, go. It's over, so. Uh. <laughs> the buzzer's can coming. Can you hear me now? The buzzer. Am I yeah. Back? You're better. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear back. you. Oh, good. <laughs> we spoke too soon. <laughs> we spoke too soon. <laughs> oh man, there it is. Oh, okay. time is out. Can I just assemble a few just... things and render them? <laughs> yeah, I need to render as well, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we're gonna we, we we're gonna show some compassion in Render Dome too. Unlike Render Dome one, we are we are brood savages. <laughs> oh ruthless. You got a compass action yeah. over there. Dang. There are the compasses. Two minutes for me. Two and a half. Two minutes. And I didn't get to the Lamborghini at all. Interesting. Your client may or may not bring you any work ever again, Mr. Dust. I know. I think I've really. <laughs> ever again. I see you got the lights, but and, and I didn't. But I did I... get the Lamborghini, so. There you go. So if we teamed up. Ooh. <laughs> should have divided it. <laughs> Would have been way better. All right. Yeah, the worst. Well, they did share the same email like, address. There are 19 things in this shot you need to deal with, giving you an average <laughs> of two minutes per item across the <laughs> shot. That's the fun of it. That's brutal. Nice. 
I hope my audio is better. Yeah, you're doing so good. Far, so good. We get you loud and clear. Good. All right. That was excellent. Um, let's see. Andy Dill's rendering. Moving. Sean's got right, a let's render start going. With, let's start with Sean. Sean, why don't you, sure. uh, why don't you take us through your comp and uh, show us how far you got? Like I, Look, there's a million things in this shot, so don't don't feel bad. Uh, just walk us through where where you're at, and we'll see what's going. Because the actually that, the cars man. look pretty good. Um, Dude, yeah, you're in the so hot seat, I man. Didn't... You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, it's funny. I, oh, I've actually got a problem right back there. I didn't invert my uh, my, my axis. You can see in that one flag. Oh, how dare right you! Here, right here. This little... Fired. You're done. I approach this from a pure paint and track 2D perspective. I didn't I didn't feel like I wanted to mess around with the 3D tracker too much, although with mm. this shot, you would think you'd get a pretty good 3D track straight away. But that said, there's so many reflections and the windows are so reflective that you can get a lot of false um, trackers. Uh, mm. you're just, I, I, would find, I was worried that I was gonna spend so much time cleaning up the track that it wasn't gonna be worth it to try and do it. And so I just compartmentalized every little thing and like I said at the beginning, uh, lots of planar tracking. And uh, with the planar tracker, as you, everybody probably knows, it's awesome because you can stabilize it in both scale and 2D and then flip it and then put the exact same track right back on top. And so, can, can you show that real quick? Because I've, I've, I've heard you talk about that before, but can you? I would love yeah. to see like sure, sure. that particular. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, let's, let's take a look at, um, at the Lamborghini. By the way, your comp is surprisingly well organized and well laid out for being under the right? gun. Well done. That's amazing. <laughs> it's um, like you could just hand uh, yeah. it off or something if you needed to. Well, I like to keep everything super organized because I get lost if I don't. Um, if yeah. when I start moving really quickly, if I go back, if everything says G mask, I, I, I won't know which one I, I need. So <laughs> it just helps me move faster, even though it theoretically Amen. slows you down. Yeah, we'll see. Um, so let me just show you really quickly that. So with this, with the, the license plate thing, that that's like a really easy, an easy thing. And I'll just redo the work as we do this. Um, so I'm just chucking around a bit. That's because usually I always keep this guy at the top and string the, the original along all the way. But so let me just so I could tell straight away that it's gonna it's gonna track no problem. So let's just redo that track. Mm -hmm. And as I as I mentioned before, color warper U transform. And so now for me the color uh, color management actually puts this into a uh, into a, a range that this thing can actually track. At least that's the way I I put it. Um, and so let's just do a quick, simple track. And of course, I was piggybacking on the other axis. Let's do this again. So planar. And it's going to track it pretty well. And then as soon as it's tracked, oh, that it's works, basically yeah. fixed. Because now. I can bring my pin and everything else. So the only thing that's in here is this new this new stuff. So I can just mm -hmm. do this and I can invert it. Go. Oh. Okay, and it's because I'm even here. So as soon as I invert it, if I bring up the crosshairs, you'll see that it's all perfectly stabilized in scale and in uh, X and Y. Mm -hmm. Right? And so then all I have to do is duplicate this attach the original to the background. And now we'll just throw that away. We'll, we'll put it into here and now we'll invert it. And we'll turn off the G mask that we used to acquire the track. And that's because it's still live in this one. Okay, and so now it's back. We just, we just inverted it, we tracked it and then we just inverted it straight away. Right, right. but now that's this that's on that is tracking it perfectly. And so all we'd have to do is hang a child off at the bottom here. 
slip it. And it's going to track. Now it's not going to look right if we look at it like this, but once we grab that two dimensional face, and we do that. So, where are you? Oh, sorry. You know what? All right. It's actually this one. No. All right. The one in the center is going to stay blessed. So there we go. So holy oh, cow, that's amazing! Yeah. Oh, neat. So that's it. It's done, already. and it just needs a little bit of help. But this, this is basically if we go back up to here. I mean, this is now this axis is tracking it. And get, mm -hmm. oh, look at all this. I didn't have to think about. Right? Oh man, and plus you that's don't great. even have to because you don't have to worry about all the atmospheric stuff floating around. How you can just soft mat that in, and Bob's your uncle, yeah. Exactly. And in this case wow, here, it's only the numbers that I needed. So that's why my license mm -hmm. plate mat is, although we can't see it because we keep going to that one, but it's just bringing in the uh, That's great. The numbers. That's a great trick. So, get that in there. Now it's on frame. So, that's your, so that's your fundamental oh. technique for pretty much the whole shot, huh? Well, yeah. And then I kind of lost a lot of time in the flag. I was under the impression, or at least I read that, uh, as we had to remove all this stuff. Right. So uh, you can see that I actually removed it completely. It's not mm -hmm. perfect. The paint needs a little bit of work and the, the whole back of the... But that, I oh, yeah. not much time. You know, yeah, but that's still pretty good for like, I mean, for 45 minutes, like that could, that could, that could solve a, a client whip test for posting for editorial, you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. That's totally. Cool. And yeah. then, yeah, so I was doing every other little thing exactly the same way, you know, removing that. I never got to these two guys. All mm -hmm. these other flags, the same thing. But yeah, as Andy Deal said, it's like, there's, you know, how many things you just divide all of these tasks up by time, and you're really into like four minutes, five minutes for each task, yeah. which is, yeah. yeah, you know. Let's, uh, That's... let's, let's head over to Andy Dill and take a look and see, uh, his render. There you go. Looks similar-ish. Um, except I used a 3D track to sort of solve all of my tracking problems, which mostly works. You can see in the upper right one that needs a little more tune-up than it's got. The rest of them are pretty mm -hmm. sticky. Mm -hmm. um, and then I used, basically I would just put cards in space and um, film each card from the tracked camera with a diffuse map. And what that does is it creates sort of a stabilized version, not dissimilar to what Sean was doing. But then when I paint all of that up, I can just stick the cards back in the same place and it all tracks back automatically. Cool. Nice. I use that for everything. Wait, you got, and you got the cars too. You got the, uh, the, the 20 minute in curveball. Like that's, that's a lot of stuff to make up. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I could do a little better with that, the paint there, but mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, it's functioning. It's one of those things yeah. where it doesn't call attention to itself. Yeah. It's definitely one of those things too, that like, you know, we've talked about on, on, on many of the Logic Lab episodes or, or the guests have rather that if you are able to get like a 3D track and get a camera track, then all of a sudden you do get things for free. So when a curveball comes at you like that, you may already have some, uh, some references in space that you can use yeah. and it just helps you out. Well, that's, yeah. So I'll show you what I did um, is when that note came in, I noticed that um, this sort of parallax level was pretty similar to this track I already had. So I copied out that axis and I just made a card here, which is again, just a big pink card. But when I put a diffuse mm -hmm. map on it, it looks like the scene. And then if I render out a camera attached to that, I get this plate right here. As you can zoom in. Oh, that's cool. So it's pretty stable, you know, not majorly stable, but stable enough. Um, and then like uh, me. B -b 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 <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing, nothing. Move, move along. Move, move, moving on. Sorry. <laughs> nothing to see here. So I'm just painting it. <laughs> nothing to um, see here. <laughs> you know, and it's 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 pretty pretty impressive paintwork, um, but it. 
you know, it works across the shot. It works across so, uh, the frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sure. Great. Um, which is mostly for a whip. It's perfect. Into and down because the car just moves that way and doesn't have any funny little bits for the most part. And then, uh, yeah, and then a little cheeky roto of the car to take that out. And then I can just go into my copy of the camera track. Which you're not seeing it now, but I got a lovely little beach ball over here. And then I can go <laughs> in and just put that card back in, and it just takes all that stuff away. Wow. So, would that the same rad. way that you awesome. approach that? Would, would you have been able to do that to the other side of the cars too? Like, is, is it easily just kind of like flippable, like what you did to do the other side of the cars? If they wanted the left side yeah, gone too? Yeah, the other side. Um, might be a little harder because I think they're a little more parallaxy and you don't have that Lamborghini mm -hmm. in front. Um, so it's a question of how much sort of parallax you get. The, the general idea, I just gotcha. Might be a little harder. Nice, awesome work. Cool, great work, both. That's both amazing. Of you. Incredible. That was fun. All right, let's do some voting here. Uh, Randy, do you want to explain how the voting works? Yeah, sure. Well, we were going to try a, a chatbot to handle all the voting, and the chatbot has since crashed. So uh, cheers to the chatbot <laughs> for being an absolute savage uh, provocateur and then bailing at the last minute, just like, a, just, just, just like it deserves. So we're going to do it really simply today, guys. You're going to spam the chat and just type in whoever think you should win today's Render Dome World Champion title by just typing in their name, Sean or Andy, in the chat. And we are going to uh, do a very precise calculation so uh so go ahead and spam the chat with who you guys think should be today's Precise. render dome world champion and uh Gonna and to try. knock the northeastern regional champion andy dill down to the uh <laughs> the chittenden <laughs> county regional champion chittenden <laughs> county local semi-finalist exactly yep so go ahead exactly. and put in the, fill out the chat with who you think should win and while yeah. everybody's voting, I mean, I have to say, you guys are both amazing. You guys are both ridiculous. Doing this live? What the? <laughs> I mean, I can right? barely handle like a Zoom call live. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing this. So um, let me hit my cheesy Crazy. Um, sound effect here. And congratulations to both of you. We're all winners. Good We're job, all guys. winners today. We're all winners. Yeah. And then just, just oh. to be, uh, just to say, um, yeah, whoever comes on the show is forever in is forever a Render Dome World Champion. I I, I, I give Andy <laughs> Dill a lot of crap for putting his his LinkedIn status as Render Dome World Champion, and that's that is done only for for dramatic purposes. Like to come on the show, and as Greg Paul once said in a text, like to do this live in front of an incredibly judgmental audience Seriously. is just Mental. nuts. So like, <laughs> so like, thanks for coming on the show and being great sports. Cause it's like, it, it's amazing. So hats totally. off to both of you guys for being uh, amazing artists and for doing your thing. So thanks a lot guys. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Appreciate you it guys. Well, Thank you very much. It's yeah. like it is definitely yeah. more stressful yeah. than a regular job because in a regular job, you can kind of, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, yeah, that's but, just yeah. how it would be. Whereas everybody watching this now is going, no, nah, you did that wrong. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was going, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get That's some fresh. comments back like, oh, I can't believe you pulled out the paint mode four <laughs> times and re hooked it up four times. And... I guess my question for you, Sean, is when you were saying you did the, the inverse of the tracking, is that something that you can, and kind of the same thing that I was asking Andy about flipping, does that work across all tracks or is there like, uh, it works mostly for everything, but like, is there just one thing you can think of where you got stuck on that? No, it'll work for all the tracks. And in fact, you know, it's, it's not exclusive just to the one axis either. So if you have, let's say a track and it's not great and you have to put another axis underneath it and you help it along, and then maybe you even have to render it out and retrack it. And now you have a third axis tracking the render. Uh, you can take all those axes and just simply reverse them, put them uh, the opposite way in the, in the schematic and then invert each one all the way down the line. And then you'll get the exact opposite. Cool. Gotcha. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, that was awesome yeah. to see. But the All right, guys. Well, is the way to go. it is uh, it is time to announce today's rendered on world champion winner, and with a precise sixty six point three seven percentage of the votes, please uh, join me in congratulating 
Sean Cochran as today's yeah. Render Dome <laughs> World Champion. Yeah. Wow, that's so fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, look, the crowd goes wild. It was really cool. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> so a wow. huge thanks really to you, awesome Sean, and, you. And, and Andy Dill, another incredible performance. Have no <laughs> fear. You will be invited back to the Render Dome, probably because you just saw it at ease and natural here. Like you're, you're, you're a great contestant and thanks for being here twice and doing your thing. <laughs> we, are, we are better for having you here. So hats off to you and your new haircut for joining us in, in another outstanding well, performance today. <laughs> Looking fresh. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. And, and thank you. Uh, I mean, I, as a guy like everybody else here who's dedicated really their professional lives to this software uh, and this craft, thank you guys so much for and celebrating what we all do every day. It's, uh, it's really, really cool. I love it. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. And thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're Damn, <crying>. onions. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Okay. Oh, Andy Milkus, we lost your mic, buddy. Oh, the AirPods have died. The AirPods have died. This is, a, this, is a, this is a dream of mine. Oh, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is the community's dream. Right? Andy's AirPods oh are dead. We can't hear you. We totally and, didn't plan this. Oh, wait. Did you just say that you're happy that my AirPods are back? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. We were saying we were saying. No, no, no. no, no. Nope. Into that. So, nope. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're at... Yep. Yep. We're great. <laughs> Perfect. No, it's really great working with you guys, too. I got to tell you. It's <laughs> it. what keeps me going. Um... Brian, do you have a slide for uh, what's coming up next on Logic Live? I do. I do. Do you want to see thank it? Everybody. <laughs> you wanna... He's We're not going to show it to you, though. <laughs> We're off. Might want to see it. We should give Brian time. Oh, perfect. So coming up, uh, again, Logic Live, we're off next week for Easter, but we're coming back on uh, Sunday, April 11th at 2 p.m. with our friends from ActionVFX.com. We're going to do some amazing VFX stock composites. Uh, with the, the stuff that the guys have there at Action VFX. April 18th at 2 p.m., we're going to do a session with Andy Brown, who uh, wants to call his his Logic Live 10 Things I Hate About Flame, which uh, he he <laughs> says like, there are things that he does with Flame. He said it's not a bitch session. There are things that he does that he always finds like are annoying or not as efficient. So he wants to kind of throw them out there to the group and see if anybody has any suggestions to uh, to make it better, which I think is a wonderful way to share some knowledge. And then April 25th at 2 p.m., we're going to do Keen with Richard Betts all the way from New Zealand. And uh, hopefully I'll have uh, worked out my audio issues by then. So uh, thank you again to Sean and Andy. Thank you to Brian and his amazing team at the Boris FX Arena. How many people do you have on that team now, Brian? What? <laughs> exactly. Who are you talking about? Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> This is me. This is it. You think there's a team? <laughs> no. All right. I mean, I can yeah, bring pan in my, over. And pan. Yeah. Oh, bring in my eight-year-old who's been helping me out the whole time, but I don't know, it's just like, this is it. All right? You cut over a in the team. kitchen like on a tea bar. You go like this. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, my God. from Star Wars with the switcher, right? <laughs> That's but, it. So good. Good stuff. We've done good it again, stuff. man. Thank you we very have, much. We have. I can't believe it. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Seriously, we really appreciate no the help. Thanks, Brian. Even though, uh, fun. <laughs> Much better than the last uh, time. Yeah, 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 great. yeah. This is great. Nowhere to go but up. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited about expectations, right? We're doing it. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Thank We're you to our them. sponsors, Synesis and uh, AJA and Gunpowder and, of course, Boris FX. Uh, these guys at Boris FX, Brian, believe it or not, does amazing live streams every Wednesday at 2 p.m., um, which he, I guess, for some reason, thinks Wednesday at 2 p.m. is a better time slot than Sunday <laughs> at 2 p.m. But... Uh, <laughs> If you head on over to Boris FX Live this coming Wednesday, they're doing a live stream at 2 p.m. on Continuum. So please be sure to check it out. They're always yeah. great. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. Everybody in the chat, this community would be nothing without you and all of you participate. So uh, we're going to head over on head on over rather to the patrons after party. It's not too late. If you want to get in and hang out with us and talk with, uh, with Sean and Andy, um, you can have Patreon. And finally, at the end. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Great. What, what, what? Patreon.com slash Logic TV. Uh, and uh, sign up and we'll send you over the link. So thank you very much, everybody. For Logic TV, I'm Andy Mokas. 
<laughs> I'm Amanda Elliott. I'm Randy McEntee. Thank you, everyone. And we will see you for Render Dome 3. Exciting. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Yeah.